this is Shell C from Paper Rock Geo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my process for making my mixed media art journal page using the prompts from the Pick a Stick Challenge Facebook group. This is a group that I run along with Peg Robinson and we have monthly challenges for art journal pages and artist trading cards and it's a fun challenge group. I welcome everyone to come and join. The link to the group is in the description box below the video. Also, you will see Peg's video link down there as well for what she did with this month's prompts, which is March 2018. So also in March, I'm participating in a daily challenge that is on Instagram that has to do with monoprinting on the gel plate. And the first day's uh, prompt for that was circles. And so I'm taking the colors from our challenge, the Pick a Stick challenge, which are pistachio green and gray, and then their prompt, which is circles, and I'm making some um, gel prints using those two things. So I put some of the apple green um, so soft paint, which is really close to what I consider the pistachio green based on what the codes are on the internet. Um, I looked at that and then I compared it. Uh, it's a yellowy bright green and then I added in some other colors to coordinate with it. Um, Dirty Martini from Dilusions Acrylics and then also their Slate Gray uh, from Dilusions and I'm just using different circle tools and paints and brayers and making a couple prints that I do use on the page, which mostly gets covered up. But that's the way mixed media is. You do a lot of layers and everything peeks through, but um, things keep getting built on and built on. So I took these two prints, they're on uh, deli paper and they're slightly different, but they're using the same colors, the pistachio green and the gray. And I am applying these to my page in my spiral bound journal. This is a 9 inch by 12 inch spiral bound journal with watercolor paper. Um, I think it's made by Strathmore maybe. But I will put the links to every product that I used in the description box below. And if you do plan on buying one of these products, please use my links because they are um, I'm an affiliate at Amazon, which means that if you use my link to buy something, I get a few cents. And that's kind of how I support my channel, which is, of course, free art videos. So that's always helpful if you use my links if you're planning on purchasing something that you saw me use. So I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and a brush and a gift card to apply this background to my page. I love the way it looks. I wish it would have stayed like that. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. Um, the first prompt in the mandatory prompts, there are six of them that you use in order. And the first one was sprinkle. And so I decided to sprinkle on some brusho um, pigment powders onto my page. And I put a little bit of moisture down and then I sprinkled them on and then I'm kind of blotting up using uh, paper towels those are shop towels and like trying to keep it looking like that that looks good right there <laughs> if you just would have stayed but the thing about the pigment powders is that they're uh, water reactive and so I tried to put a layer of clear gesso over the top because I knew I was going to be doing more layers on top of this and I wanted to try to kind of seal it up and when I put the clear gesso on of course the powders reacted to the gesso and got all over the brayer and moved around and so they're not as pretty as they were so then I thought maybe I can fix this by using a little watered down white gesso and you know Lots of people say that art goes through an ugly stage. Not all of my art goes through an ugly stage, but this one did. And you know what you got to do when that happens is to just keep going. Don't let it phase you. You know that you can always put another layer on. That's what mixed media is. Um, back in the day when I was a new artist and I was 
you know, trying out things. I used to, at this point, I would have just pitched this thing. I'm like, this is ugly. I don't like it. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> I would start over. But no, that's that's not what you do in mixed media. You build on it. You change it. You apply something else over the top. You don't give up. And the result turns out good most of the time. Not all the time. And that's okay too, because this is an art journal. This is just paper and paint. It's not the end of the world. We're not trying to make something for, you know, the modern museum of art. We're just playing and learning. And that is exactly what the Pick a Stick Challenge is about, is playing and learning. Stretching your creativity by using weird prompts, um, you know, coming up with ideas based on the prompts and then working it out and playing in your art journal. So the next step, step two, is stencil. So I had this, uh, um, what is this called? Herringbone stencil. I think it's uh, the Crafters Workshop. I'll look it up. And I thought it kind of looked like stems with leaves, like maybe a fern or something. It doesn't have to be a herringbone. It could be, it could be stems. So I used some of that dirty martini colored paint to stencil that on dried it and then I decided to make a paint that's more close to the color of the pistachio green um, so I used that leftover dirty martini added a little bit of dahlia ride yellow and a little bit of white titanium white and made a lighter version of the color a more yellowy version of the color and then I used this uh, circle stencil from artist seller it's a part of the set of four that you can layer their layering stencils. Um, I use that one to put some of that color on and then I'm giving that a good dry and I decide okay I'm done with stencils but then the next prompt is letters and I decide a good way to put on letters would be to use another stencil <laughs> so this is a Tim Holtz by Ranger stencil and it's just got some um, letters that you would see on a stencil you know like You'd see this stenciled on the side of a box that says cargo or something. <clears throat> Very basic letters in the uppercase. And I use the slate gray dilutions to stencil some of those on, on the bottom part of the page. So I've got the page kind of divided into two thirds, one thirds. And I did that intentionally um, when I was smearing around the, the uh, brush oak crystals with the clear gesso I made my brayer go across and make kind of a darker and lighter area um, I just thought it would be more dynamic to have some some differences on the page and instead of putting all of the same stuff all over the page if you know what I mean so that's what I did now the next prompt was uh, heat and I just let my drawing of the paint with my heat tool be heat. Uh, I considered doing some embossing or something. And I just decided, you know what? I use, uh, used our, already used a lot of heat. <laughs> Between every step, I use my heat tool to dry it because I'm too impatient. <clears throat> so um, I could have melted something and made it change with, you know, melted plastic or I don't know. I just decided that that was good enough. It was good enough. I used my heat tool. <clears throat> so then I decided since I had this two thirds, one thirds lighter, darker type of a thing going on, that that part at the bottom could be a ground and the part at the top could be um, a sky. So I decided to draw some flowers because the next prompt is dark. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what can I do for dark? And at first I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'm using my dark pen. That's a black pen, but that's not enough dark. Then I decided that what dark really means to me is nighttime, and so I could make my scene be in the nighttime. So I drew out <clears throat> all my flower shapes as if they're growing out of this ground that has the letters at the bottom. And, you know, it's got those ferny, stemmy looking things in the background, which rem also reminded me of plants growing up, 
you know, like plants and flowers with the, the ferny looking things and the blobby looking things. That's where I was going with this. That's what, <laughs> that's where I was going with this people. I didn't know that when I started, but mixed media and art journaling develops as you're going along, you get an idea and the, that's what the prompts also encourage you to do. Go along, get an idea. You've got a new prompt. What does it mean to me? What does it say to me? What can I do with this prompt that will further the progression of my page? That's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're trying to do with our group and our challenges to uh, encourage you to think and imagine and dream about what these things are. So the pen I'm using, in case you guys didn't know, <laughs> that is a black fine tip Posca pen. Uh, it's not the extra fine, it's just the regular fine. I find that the extra fines uh, don't last as long. They have the little metal around the bottom, the base, and then they have this little tiny tip. And I tend to ruin them really easily by using them on top of acrylic and stuff. So I just prefer the fine. It's nice and juicy. And then now is my time to apply the nighttime. So I get out some black gesso and this, this process has a name. I always just call it exclusion because I'm excluding the background so that the foreground will stand out more. But it has another name and I can't I can never remember it because I just use it just I just say it's exclusion technique so uh, <laughs> I I'm not even gonna try to figure it out you know what if you guys want to know what the other name for it is you can look it up yourselves um, I'm using a fairly stiff small flat paintbrush and it's a bit too big to go around all those tiny tiny flowers like, why did I draw this kind of flower? What was I thinking? I knew I was going to paint around it. <laughs> Silly me. So I move on to the other side. I turn it upside down so that I can finish out all the other page, rest of the page, and then come back in with a smaller brush around those teeny tiny little stems and flowers on that one type of a flower. Would all these flowers be in season at the same time? Don't know. Would they all grow in, you know, in the same bed? Also don't know. It doesn't matter. They're just flowers and they're growing at night. And that's all you need to know about that, right? <laughs> I'm not even sure what type of flowers these are. That one's probably a daisy, maybe. Maybe the one in the center is a poppy. Um, that thing with all the little petals, don't know. That other one might also be a poppy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure someone will tell me. Someone always does. So this part of the process probably took longer than the drawing. The drawing took a while, but this took a long time. <laughs> but the effect is really cool, and I haven't done it in a while. I, I used to do this type of a technique all the time, and I haven't done it in a while. So now I have a very small round pointed brush to go around all these little petals and flowers on these this other plant and I also touch it up with a black pin too the black Posca pin and the gesso the black gesso work really well together they're both a flat black so had I used like some carbon black fluid paint to do the background and then went over the top of it with the black Posca pen. You'd be able to see where I put the Posca pen because it's flat, it's matte, and the fluid paint or the heavy body paints both have a sheen. So I can do this easily without worrying about that black pen ever showing. It doesn't show at all. You can't see it at all. So it's as if I didn't even do it. But sometimes the pen is easier to control than a brush. 
In fact, all the time, the pen is easier to control than a brush. So I spend a lot of time touching up um, and refining around different areas. So the last prompt is snowflake. And I have a little snowflake stamp. And I figure snowflakes kind of look like stars in some cases. And so I use this one, which isn't a real intricate snowflake. It's, it's just kind of a, looks, it looks enough like a star. So I put it as stars in my background on my night sky. And I also drew a moon up at the top so that you'd for sure know that it was the nighttime. It was the dark. And I'm just using a titanium white acrylic paint to do that stamping and then also uh, the splattering as well with the leftover paint to make the smaller stars and fill up the background. I don't want it to splatter on the flowers themselves so I'm kind of mopping it up a little bit with a, a wet baby wipe. So then <clears throat> I bring in the white fine tip Posca pen and do some detailing highlights around different things to uh, just make it more interesting. Adding back in the little uh, stamen on the, that, that one that might be a poppy. The other one's definitely a poppy, but this other one might, might be a poppy. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what else it could be though. It's just from the side instead of from the, the top as much. I don't know. Anyway, I decide to write some words at the bottom. And so I start out writing what I want to write onto my scratch paper to make sure that I know where to center it. And then I count the letters and I, I start at the center and work my way to the right and then fill in my way to the left. And that way my word is perfectly centered, or my, not my word, but my sentence is perfectly centered on the page. Um, that's something I learned back in the stamping days to start your, you know, if you're doing letter stamping to start, the, start in the middle of the word, because otherwise it would have been off center. I can guarantee 100% that it would have been off center. The other option would be to print it on the printer and cut it out. And then I could put it where I want it when I glue it down. Um, but this worked fine. I did it in pencil and then I went over it with the black Posca pen and then I went over it again to um, thicken all the left side down strokes to make it more interesting. Then I removed all my protective tape and my last thing to do was to just add back in some more white highlights, even more because I thought it needed a little bit more um, something to bring those images to the foreground because there's a lot of splattering in the background which was kind of I don't know obscuring it a little bit and so just adding a few little sketchy white lines helps make the flowers stand out from the background. So if you've enjoyed this video please remember to give it a thumbs up and to leave a comment so I know you were here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and if you click that little bell next to subscribe it remind you when I have a video come out, which is pretty much every other day. So that's, you know, a lot of videos. <laughs> also, if you know someone who would love this challenge or this page, please share it with them so that they can come and join us in our group. And the group is linked below the video. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.